Almost every American family is touched one way or another by the heartache of substance abuse. It's always bad, but it is especially painful when it's your child. There are 5 million people under the age of 26 right now in the U.S. struggling with this problem. And every year, thousands of them go to Florida. Not for the sun, but for help in a new kind of rehab program. Many are getting ripped off instead in a scam that can cost them their lives. Cynthia McFadden investigates this public health emergency. This is not a case where a few bad apples spoil the whole bunch. This is a case where most of the apples are spoiled. Palm Beach County State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg is talking about the drug rehab industry in South Florida, where some 400 addiction treatment centers are luring thousands of young people. Parents send their kids down here to South Florida to get well, not to die. With more rehabs here per capita than just about any place else in the country, Palm Beach County might well be considered the recovery capital of America. And while there are some good facilities, sadly, scenes like this are playing out every day here. This is body cam video of police responding to a drug overdose. 24-year-old Allison Flory died in the very place she was supposed to be getting help for her addiction. She'd come here for drug treatment at a facility called Reflections. Did you get a phone call from the people at Reflections? No. No one called you? No, no one ever called me to let me know. To this day? No. I mean, what kind of people run a facility where a young woman dies and they never call her parents? No, there's no condolences, there's nothing. Allison had gotten caught up in the Florida shuffle, a criminal scheme born of the opioid crisis. It's making some people very rich and putting others at risk. Like millions of young people in America, Allison became addicted to opioids. Her parents say it started with pain pills in high school, and by her early 20s, she was in serious trouble. She tried rehab near her hometown outside Chicago, but relapsed. Her parents were desperate. So Florida, why Florida? Well, the facilities down there that we heard about were very good. It was beautiful. It is beautiful, and it seemed like a good fit for her. And you felt at this time hopeful? I felt hopeful more than I'd ever felt ever. The rehab center provided a free plane ticket, and Allison was off to South Florida, where a new model for rehab is creating a crisis. That's an overdose. It's an overdose? Yeah. The RAPD male overdose administering Narcan. In the last four years, the number of overdoses here has quadrupled as the treatment industry has exploded. More than 4,600 overdoses in Palm Beach County alone last year. We rode along with Delray Beach Fire and Rescue. And in just 90 minutes, we witnessed two more. Uh, we can run 12, upwards of 12 in a day. 12 in a day? Not a great record for the recovery capital of America. It is the Wild West. Kerry Glickstein is the mayor of Delray Beach. The most vexing problem that our entire community is dealing with is a broken recovery industry and the collateral damage. So what's different down here? Instead of checking into a rehab, down here most addicts live together in residential neighborhoods in houses like this one called sober homes. There are four just on this block and thousands in South Florida. Treatment happens at outpatient facilities. It was supposed to make recovery cheaper and better, but the system ended up being corrupted. Jennifer says Allison tried to tell her as much before she died. She would call and say, they don't care about us. All they care about is money. I'm like, that is ridiculous. Of course not. I mean, you believe that people who are running rehab facilities, sober homes, are going to help get her sober. Right. She didn't even know the half of it. But she was right. But she was right. After Allison died, Jennifer traveled to Florida to try to find out what happened to her daughter. Armed with reams of bills to her insurance company from multiple treatment centers, doctors, and laboratories. 3400 100 4100 2000 almost $10,000 in lab fees for one date of service. 
Many of the charges are for care she doesn't think Allison ever really got. The total for 15 months, over $1 million. There's two ways out. You either get out and recover or you die. Michelle Curran also sent her daughter Micaiah to Florida. Despite more than $600,000 worth of bills to her insurance, she doesn't think Micaiah got very much help. And I'm like, I didn't know you saw your therapist every single day. She goes, I don't see my therapist every single day. But you're being billed for that. I said, but we're being billed for it. I said, and do you have something else going on? Are you sick or something? They've done a ton of labs on you. I said, I have a bill here for $10,600. For one lab? Yeah, yes, one. And she goes, Mom, I've, and this was her words, I've peed in a cup twice this week. I want you to take me through bit by bit what looks from the outside like a scam. It's a total scam. The state attorney, Ehrenberg, says it's all part of a massive kickback scheme. And those outrageous lab bills are typical. There's gold in that urine. And so the labs will compete to get the urine sent to them. They make a lot of money billing insurance. And so they will kick back some of the money to the outpatient facility or the sober home, wherever it gets them. The patient referral. After seven months of treatment, Micaiah was worse than ever and died of an overdose of heroin mixed with carfentanil. How much does it hurt? It still does. Yeah, it's a lot. Sorry. You know, if the lawmakers in Washington, D.C. knew what was going on, they would hopefully enact changes to federal law to prevent the scam from continuing because not only are taxpayers footing the bill, but People are dying unnecessarily because of this. He points to the Affordable Care Act, which makes payment for addiction treatment virtually unlimited. It's supposed to improve recovery, but criminals here see an unlimited pot of money to exploit. So the legislation that's designed to protect people who have addiction actually is exposing them to this horrific scam. This is a free-for-all created by well-intended federal law. Other well-intended federal laws designate sober homes as housing for the disabled, and that prevents local officials from regulating them. There's no regulations, no certifications, no registration. No supervision. There is no requirement to have any supervision. You could open up a sober home today. Today. You just turn your house into a sober home. You just rent it out. He says it is no way to get better, but it is another way everyone makes money. Anybody with an insurance policy down here is more valuable than anybody without one. Mercedes Smith, a recovering addict herself, told us sober home operators compete for addicts with good insurance, enticing them with promises of free rent, free food, free cigarettes. She says she was paid to go to 12-step meetings to recruit people to her sober home. We would have to drive around Delray and anybody with like suitcases, we would have to ask them, do you have insurance? place you can go. A crooked sober home operator gets an illegal payment for each new patient brought to treatment. It's called patient brokering. We met Colin and Drew who've seen it firsthand. They tell us it's the money that makes the Florida shuffle go round. They'll pay you like $500, you know, like some people like $1,000 to get a treatment. It's like hustling humans is what I feel it's like. Pretty much. They'll take extra insurance money and pay you to live there and just let you get high because the owner's making bank. And that leads addicts to move from place to place to place. Before Allison died, she'd cycle through nine different treatment centers in just 15 months. I was just thankful that I had good insurance. And in this particular case, I wish I had no insurance. She was a gold mine oh, for them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it led to her death. Micaiah went to seven different treatment centers. One of them was Reflections, that treatment center affiliated with the sober home where Allison died. She told her mother that the man who ran it, Kenny Chapman, personally supplied her and other addicts with drugs. Heroin, yes. So when they go test, they test what they call dirty. Which means that they can get into recovery. So then they send them back to detox. And then Kenny Chapman gets a kickback on that. There's no incentive in sobriety. The money is in relapse. It haunts me. She trusted in people that she shouldn't have trusted in. And 
And we told her to trust those people. Mm -hmm. During the course of our investigation, we looked into dozens of treatment centers and sober homes. We dug into police reports and found drug use and patient brokering are rampant. We're in the parking lot of a location where Allison received treatment. The place has changed its name three times since December. We have some questions to ask. Furniture turned upside down, nobody there. We tried to talk to another treatment center Allison also attended, the London Treatment Center. It's linked to a sober home where there were six overdoses in just five months. Yeah, hi, I'm Cynthia McFadden from NBC News. Do you work for the London Treatment Center? I do, but you don't have, I'm not giving permission to be on camera. We just have a couple of questions. That's fine, but I have no comment right now. I'm not giving you permission to be on camera. We asked if someone else would talk to us. No one would. But there is hope. Florida has expanded the state attorney's power to crack down on those who prey on addicts. How many arrests have you made? We have made 29 arrests uh, here in Palm Beach County. That's since July of last year. They include the operators of treatment centers and sober homes, the head of a lab, and numerous people accused of patient brokering. More to come? More to come. And we believe we're closer to the beginning of this effort than the end. As for the man who ran reflections and gave drugs to addicts, Kenny Chapman has been sent to federal prison for 27 years. But as you heard for desperate families around the country caught up in the sweep of the opioid epidemic, the mayor has some advice. To the parents who think that they're sending their kids down here because it's number one in rehab. That's a complete fallacy. Keep them closer to home. They are not getting better in Florida. This scheme has already moved into New York, California, Texas, and Arizona. So watch out, because it could be coming to a spot near you. Coming up.